Welcome fellow coin collectors and how you going? And in today's video, I've only got like four rolls, which uh, means I'm actually quite poor. But anyway, my name's Glenn and in today's video, we're gonna be just going through these 50 cent coins and seeing what we're actually finding. Uh, but first you look at the ends to see what the enders are. And as you can see, is this focusing? No, see? No. Damn. Oh, that, that sucks. Anyway, the end is so 2013. Uh, 1983. This one we don't know. Looks like a more of a modern coin. And this one is... Oh, that camera is very sensitive. 2006, not really worth anything. Um, that one might be a uh, degraded die 210 so check if that's rotated and this one we don't know free not free I can say free however I like free Ooh. anyway so today's video is actually supposed to be the 1988 was it the 1978 Uh, 50 cent coin, but I actually forgot to make it. I was a bit busy with uh, some schoolwork. So, what we are looking for today, move the lamp around, is some um, 50 cent coins giving away. Uh, these are really not worth giving away. So, um, do you want this 50 cent coin? This one's a pretty nice coin. It's a beautiful coin, 1983. But it's only worth 50 cents. So another 1983. This one looks like a beautiful darkish brown color. This is an earthy coin. And it is really not worth keeping. Then we have some more. So the 2019 is probably one that's actually pretty much on the ball at the moment. 2013, nah, not really worth keeping. You also rotate it like this, just to make sure none of them are actually rotated. So 210, so this is the rotator one you want to get if you can find it. 210 should be like, um, it'll be one o'clock, two o'clock rotation. So, 211, no. Okay, this one's, oh, let's see, 2001. You can see Australia is actually quite, has a die degradation, so that means that the lettering in the Australia actually started to break down. And this one's go for uh, probably a few dollars each in that condition, probably about five dollars each. You also got doubling on the kangaroo in the back there. So these ones, while well, they're actually not too rare, they're actually not too common, so that's uh, something to actually hold on to. Uh, here we have a 1971, about 21 million. Uh, this one's probably not really worth keeping. Then, 2003, this is the commemorative, quite common, so not worth keeping. Here we have 83, it's the third one, so it's pretty common. 212, no. Here is the commemorative, this one you have to look for cuds. The cuds are actually quite, not very rare on actually any of the Australian coins. And they probably actually had a few dollars, so it's got nothing on it. 94. So this is the most ugly coin I've actually ever seen minted in Australia. You only keep these if uh, it's in high grade, but uh, even then I'd probably be really reluctant to keep it. Ah, 2017. And that one looks not worth keeping. 2011. Okay, 1976. Even though it's an old coin, not really worth keeping. Okay, 
this one is oh 2016 from memory I've got the coin book Renix so how many I think there's like five million of these minted yes 85 93 are the ones you want to keep so this one has a mintage of oh, where's my mintages okay oh, looks like I've lost it anyway so this is actually a coin to actually keep not too rare but not too common and uh, pretty much what you want to keep in that one Where's the other one? So here we have, oh, hope I'm not going to get a whole heap of these. These are not really not worth keeping. Oh, another one. Another, oh, it looks a bit better. And the thing you'll find about this 2001 is that they're pretty much off center. So you actually get doubling on this side as well as that side there. So that's actually quite common. That won't add any value, but if this is actually very corroded and uh, there's lots of uh, doubling and cuds on it it's actually worth keeping and the last one here is 2014 so I've got two coins out of that to actually keep and if you find any rolls like this with nothing on it uh, it's just a generic roll from a coin company uh, not a coin company a security company that actually rolls these coins and I actually got these from the Commonwealth Bank in Coburg so everything's just opening up in Victoria so in a few places are taking coins but I I don't expect actually to get new coins for quite a while so 2006 and this one is 2008 very common another 1971 pretty common year not really worth keeping. It's pretty hard to sell those. 79. So this 79, you want to see if it's actually a has a double bar behind the head. So this one doesn't look like it. And the 79 double bar is a lot rarer than the actual 1980. Well, not rare, but scarce. And oh, that's very well used. 44 million of those ones and people someone sometimes asks me why is this coin black generally this is because of fire it actually blackens the actual coin so if you actually go to like any of the war memorials you see the flame with the coins in it you see uh, some of them actually turn black that have actually been close to the flame and also uh, sometimes depending on this soil and that can actually corrode like this then we have a 1978 pretty well circulated not worth keeping then we have a another 1979 so the early to mid 70s is probably harder to actually get and this one is a 1983 okay I didn't actually mention a, a lot of coins, but yes, the 1994 wide date and narrow date is something to look out for. So I'll go over those after the video. I actually haven't made a video on it, and that's a, a good video to actually make. Okay, 2015. 2007. So 2007. 50 cent coins you actually get a lot of uh, corrosion so that looks like it's actually got yeah you can see it's got doubling on the actual zeros so it's die degradation it means that the actual image of the die started to break down and uh, the 2007 is actually the most common date to actually get them. Uh, and the other years you can get it any year but most of the other years are actually not as common uh, put that aside. They usually don't really sell that well. And 2014. Okay. Here we have a 76. Oh, I don't even know what that is. 
76, not really worth keeping. Another 2001. New. No. Ninety-six. Okay, here's another commemorative one. This is actually quite common. Not really worth uh bird, bird shit on the seventy-six. Uh that might be. Or it could be like glue. Let's have a look. Does it come off? Yeah, it comes off. Could be like glue or sticky tape residue. Don't know. I don't really wanna know. Could be anything. Okay, here we have 2004. Something due. This is actually one coin I actually like. 50 cent. Not really worth keeping in this condition. But it's actually a nice design with a windmill. And 2011. So, as I said, I'm looking forward to 2009. As well as, you know, like some other coins, 85, 93. Uh, 2000 coin, that's for the, uh, the 20 cent coin, the big and large and small head. So here we have a 210. Uh, this one looks in pretty good condition, but a pretty common coin. Testing me. Okay, that's always good to be tested. But quite frankly, I haven't actually noticed any other 50 cent coins with the large and small head. They could be out there, but you know, I don't know everything. Okay, 2014. Scratchy, scratchy. 1980. So this is the other one that you want to look for the double bar at the back. And that's not it. Another commemorative coin. 82, Commonwealth Games. Pretty common. This is actually my favourite 50 cent coin in 1984. It's just, just the way it's actually centred, I actually quite like it. And the thick border. Don't know why. But really, that coin's not really worth keeping. Okay, so this is another coin you should actually keep. Royal Visit, I believe there's roughly about. Okay, got the book open. Uh, five million, so really not a common coin to actually find in circulation, but so I keep all of these coins that I actually get. Then we have. Double bar. Okay, I have made another video, but a double bar occurs, it can occur on any year, but it's most common on 1966 and 1979 and 80. So behind the emu's head, you have uh, two bars going like from the head to the ribbon. And that's actually what a double bar is. I haven't found any in these, oops, in this lot, but if I actually find it, I can actually show you. So, 78, common year. And 2013. So, as you can see, I'm not really getting any new 50 cent coins out of this lot. So, 2007. Okay, so I'm getting quite a few commemorative coins, and these commemorative coins are pretty much a high mintage and not really worth keeping. So 2006. So this one you can also get corrosion on the actual 50 as well, as well as the emu and kangaroo. Yes, yes, Paul. I'm actually looking forward to 2009s, but I'm in Victoria, and I don't think we're going to get new coins for a while. Victoria's just opened up, so um, business is actually coming back, but, you know, they just probably don't need new coins. A lot of them actually just use card now. So, okay, maybe I've just seen one. Hard to know what to look for. Yeah, 
that is from Simbangi. Yeah, just keep looking. You, you should actually look for every year because uh, I've heard about like 2006 and 2009 coins having and some other ones having a double bar. Not very common. Disaster state. Actually, people think it's that. It's actually not as bad as what people think. So, the place where I work is actually pretty much nearly returned to normal. Uh, I don't think it, many people have seen any 2009 coins in any state uh, because from July 2019 to June 2020 there were actually no coins entered by oh, ordered by anyone and So there were actually very few coins minted for that. I reckon most of these coins that were actually minted were probably, probably minted in the act for the actual bags. Coin sets and probably uncirculated sets. I don't think any were minted for circulation. And got some one dollar coins for check for donation dollars. So the first ones, Anzac common year, 22 million. Uh, 86, pretty common. Also look for errors on the actual coins. So 2013. Dictator Dan. I actually think Dan Andrews would have done better than the actual Liberals. Liberals are the ones actually pretty much messed up everything in the first place. So... 1988, but this is a coin channel, not a political channel. So I don't really like to bring politics into coins, even though coinage is actually reflecting by politics. It has, uh, I heard that the 2020 20 cent coins are actually quite common, and a lot of people were taking them back to banks. It's only in the coin group, so on Facebook, and also the $2. Yes, yes, uh, Crema, I agree, most of them are crap. Ooh, donation dollar. I haven't actually seen any, so I should actually start using coins more. Anyway, so 2001 is the rotated. This is not the rotated coin, but you can actually find them. Uh, so always check your 2001 coins for rotations. And here we have a coin with a scratch. So this has a scratch going down there. Some people will mistake it as uh, mint damage, but this is actually just post mint damage, 2011. So uh, what am I looking for in $1? Um, 2019, 2004, this one, this coin here. So this only has a mintage of uh, about 1.4 million. Mobile Vrues, 2014. Most of the coins for 2014 are the Anzac coins. So you've got about 22 million, one and a half million roughly. So this is a coin you should actually keep. Although probably in better condition. Then we have no, 2004. No. Okay, so check these for rotations. And also any, check any commemorative coins for actual mint marks. So here's another 2016. With the 2016 $1 coins, check this kangaroo here. Check that leg because some of them do have a missing leg. 2015 is actually more common. Uh, 2016 I'd say it's probably pretty scarce. And also with the 2014 again, we'll go back to that one. There is a mule with a 10 cent coin, so this, this one's not the mule. So they have actually found a mule, which is actually quite scarce. There's only like a few, probably five to six, no one so far. So that's another coin you should actually look out for. And any cuds? With the cuds, you actually find them quite a lot of them up here on the 
fourth and fifth kangaroo. So if the kangaroos, this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. And 2011, not really worth worrying about. 2009. All right, so this one's actually in pretty good condition. Not worth keeping because that still is pretty damaged. And that one. See this one you might think is actual a mule with doubling here, but because there's no doubling up here, it's just slightly off center. And here we have 84. Surprised I haven't gotten any more 84 coins, because actually quite common. 88, 2018, that's actually quite a nice coin. And also 2015, so this is the one with the, usually you can find a missing leg there, but this one doesn't have it, so, and with all the scratches, not really worth keeping. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Not really that many coins to actually look out for. Uh, so what have we got? This coin here, Royal Visit, 2000, definitely worth keeping. So let's zoom out and put them down so 2000 then we have a this has a corroded die then we have another corroded die 2016 so it's actually not really much actually worth uh, looking for then we have a 2000 and 18 and 16. What do I keep those for? That no, doesn't matter. 2014. So, uh, no, I'm not going to keep those. And also, I actually got some new Australian $100 notes. So, this is the new one. It came out two days ago. And I went to that ATM. My wife got some banknotes out. And this is actually what she picked up. So, as you can see, it's actually quite nice. This one, ah, so not quite in sequence yet. And there's supposed to be two actual uh, signatures for this. And I actually have not seen both of them yet. So we're just going to see if there's actually two different signatures. But I've read, I read somewhere that there were, like the uh, $220 note. And as you can see, it's quite nice. This actually looks better in hand than what it actually looks on the internet. So yeah, it looks like a powerful owl. Then we have some wattle. Looks, some people say it looks like bacteria. But it's a wattle fowl. Uh, the opera singer, Nelly Melba. And... Then we have her fan, that's for her. Here's the War Memorial in Canberra. What's on the John Monash side? So he was a military general. Uh, I think all polymer notes are actually quite secure. If you get the ones from Vietnam, the Maldives, New Zealand, they pretty much have the same security features. Uh, but the once in Maldives is actually quite better. This looks like the War Memorial in Victoria. So, and here's some poppies. Beautiful. And looks like a surveyor. I need to check out. I'm not too sure what that actually is. Does it, if anyone knows, please leave a comment down below. So I just want to know, what do you actually, what do you think of these $100 banknotes? Lots of holograms, lots of shading, yes. Spin one, <laughs> yes. These are only good to hold, like I'll probably just keep two of these, or one. Uh, but with each prefix, you probably got at least 10 million banknotes. So with the first and last prefix, we actually don't know how much I've actually printed, but 
I would say 10 million. So I'll make a better video for this on Monday. With, uh, and yes, yeah, so I got them from Commonwealth Bank ATM. I've never actually had an ATM dispense a hundred dollar notes, but apparently they do now. Weird portraits. I reckon they're not too bad in hand. The the previous hundred dollar notes are actually a lot better than these. Uh, a lot of people can't. Dwayne, a lot of people can't afford to actually hold a hundred dollar notes. I'm not too sure if I can hold these as well. With the recession, a lot of people are actually struggling for money. And it's coming to Christmas. A lot of people will probably want to buy some presents for their family. So, but good thing is, is that these are going to be issued over probably the next three years. So we've got the $50 banknotes and the new ones are actually still being issued. So... I actually got a few, so these are all in sequence. These are, uh, when did we get these? I think probably Thursday I got these. So the 2018 are also still being issued. So don't worry if you actually don't get these straight away. You know, in three or four years, they'll probably still be issuing these 2019. Oh. That's another thing, the dated 2019. So maybe this is the first run. Because this is supposed to be dated 2020. Hmm. So, that's also something to look out for. I need to actually look that up. So anyway, this is pretty much Supposed to be a coin video, but it ended up being both coin and banknote. If you actually get any hundred dollar notes, the fifties, if you actually get any hundred dollar notes, I actually like to know what are they dated, 19 or 20. Um, these ones are dated 2018. All the fifties I got are dated 2018. The only New Year that I've actually seen on the Reserve Bank of Australia website is the 2018 $5, but they haven't issued those. And this, I'm going to actually look up and actually get back. Because as I said, there's supposed to be two signatures. As you can see, these ones are different. Got Mr. Lowe. And Secretary of Treasury is actually different. Wow. Well, yeah, 2019. What? So probably keep these. So Patrick, you got 2019 and 2020 or just 2020? Because... Uh, so these are probably a test to actually see if these banknotes are good, start printing and then, oh, I don't know, I need to actually look into it anyway. Okay, and yeah, I'd actually like to know which is actually the low one. So these are all low, 89,000, maybe, I haven't actually checked to see if anyone sold them on eBay. I just got these today. Uh, okay, so with the $2 coin, the Fire one, the Mint is selling them for uh, $10, but the Mint is also going to issue $2 million for circulation, so I don't know if $10 for just a normal coin is actually really worth it. Um, considering the other coins with a mintage of $2 million, you can pretty much pick them up for like $5 or less. I'm just really just not going to purchase it. No, it's just to me, it doesn't really make any sense actually buy a ten dollar coin when it could go down in the future. Uh, the original two dollar coins are also for circulation, but they're going to issue those next year. The mint always issues uncirculated and proof sets in the year beforehand, 
So the 2021 Proven Uncirculated set is coming out now. That's pretty normal for the Mint to do that. Actually, a lot of years actually issue them like in July or August. So it's been a bit late for them. So next year you can actually get the Aboriginal $2 coin for circulation. So as all the coins in the uncirculated set are probably going to be issued for circulation, I don't think the value will actually increase like the 2019 coins. But we'll see. Maybe the Aboriginal coin will actually become a hot product and that people will actually start to hoard them. How many... Uh, for the 2019 JC effigies, uh, pretty much not much, not many. I've only found about five coins. And if you look at this one, okay, so these are the mintages. So you got five cent, you got four million, ten cent, you got three point eight million, uh, twenty cent, you got three million, fifty cent. 70,000 plus you got ones oh, all of these you got the rolls You've also got the Coins issued in bags. So these mintages are the lowest, but they're probably like 50,000 more coins minted the one dollars you got 2.2 million and the two dollars 1.6 million uh, I'm not too sure how JP Coin Capers got them. Maybe I'll need to ask him. I think he would have got some bags from the coin swap, uh, which happened early or late last year. Uh, early this year, they had a coin swap as well. But yeah, and they probably would have swapped 2019 coins as there. But he could have also someone sent him coins or he could have uh, purchased them online. So, or he actually could have got some through noodling. I'm not too sure. I don't actually watch all his videos. Yes, so you got the actual. So this is the IRB. 236,000, so probably 250,000 of those, probably 100,000 of these. Then you got the the Aboriginal languages, 2 million, still pretty low. And the highest, uh, the commemorative coins are actually quite high, so you've got the Wallabies, 2.7, uh, 2.1. Then you've got the repatriation, you've got 2 million bit. You've got the police coin, 3.5 million, so it's actually quite high. And the 75 years, which is 2020 coin, only 100,000 so far. But with all the coins that actually came out, a few months ago in the rolls lots of people actually get them I reckon that has a mintage of 2 million plus so the only 2019 coins not to keep is probably the $1 IRB $2 IRB pretty high mint uh, 20 cent IRB 10 cent I wouldn't keep 5 cent so I, with the 2019 IRB I'd only keep the 50 cent with JC I'll probably keep all of them and uh, all of the coloured coins as well so that's basically what you need to look for and hopefully in a few months or maybe even for Christmas we could actually get some new coins in Victoria because as you know Victoria's been in lockdown, whoops, for the past pretty much six months really. Businesses haven't been able to actually open up, so coin demand has been pretty much non-existent. Let's focus. God, I hate that. Lehoma. Why Lehoma? You guy listen to Kong Dong Lama. If you don't know what Lehoma, it just says hello in Cantonese, which is the language my wife actually speaks. Sick la. What? You want to eat what? Something. Can't complain. 
hole. Yeah, if I miss out on something, I don't really complain. Only if I believe that it's uh, not fair onto other collectors. Like I think the firefighter commemorative. <laughs> Sorry, the firefighter commemorative two dollar coin C mint mark. I think they stuffed that one up again. They let people first buy a hundred and then they reduced it twenty five, and a lot of people missed out. And um, a lot of people actually are not pretty happy, especially those that just wanted one or two coins. Now, as you can see, I don't mind if the price of a coin actually increases over time like you give it one or two years it might increase like from $15 to $40 or 45 but not overnight you know you sell out within five or six hours and then you see them on eBay for 50 bucks and they were 15 now nah, that that's just really not fair on to other people who actually want to collect them so Quite frankly, I just don't collect that stuff anymore. So, I really... I'm not going to purchase anything from the mint, really. I will... Probably get... I'll probably get some mint sets. But... I'll probably buy them off eBay. Because they're... Usually the postage is cheaper. Yes... Dwayne, everyone has a budget they need to collect and quite frankly I'm not going to pay $50 for a C mint mark or $500 for a firefighter's coin roll especially when the actual coin rolls went from $5,000 to $7,500 so $500, no considering you can actually purchase the uh, like the Police one for I don't know two hundred dollars I believe it's the last time I looked anyway I I just don't purchase this stuff after it's all gone out it's just not worth my time and in the end you're just gonna probably get ripped off because all, all these two dollar coins especially repatriation that went from twenty dollars per coin and it's dropped to like six to seven dollars now so whoever purchased it in two thousand nineteen at twenty dollars. Uh, you just lost your money. So that's what you actually need to be uh, looking out for. So that's why I actually don't buy into the hype. This coin has a, something wrong with the actual rim. Uh, 2015. Yeah, so don't buy into the hype. Uh, don't, like the C mint mark and the rolls. I would just wait to see what happens. The price is just too high at the moment. People pay crazy cash in the coin madness of recent years. Um, yes, they have. People get too excited at first. And pretty much a lot of them actually get caught out. And they end up uh, losing money. Especially... Especially if you purchase from the Perf Mint, I recommend not purchasing from the Perf Mint. If you're going to buy something from Perf Mint, wait a few years because the coin price will actually probably drop. Best to buy at release as too speculative. Yeah, if you can purchase it when it first comes out for the issue price, like $100 per roll, $15 for a C Mint mark, yeah, then that's good. Or if you can't do that, then. For most products, especially $2 coins, I would see what the actual price goes out. Because, you know, they've been dumping them at uh, four times the price on the internet. So, I actually wouldn't pay that. I wouldn't recommend anyone else paying that. Uh, for the normal $2 coin firefighters with no cement mark, 2 million of them are going to be issued for circulation. So, I reckon buying a card of coin for... Ten dollars is uh, no. I just won't do that. Considering that the Paralympics and which is uh, the cricket was issued for three dollars, 
in the card and that one's pretty much pushing like five or six dollars now so no I reckon the ten dollar one's just gonna drop in price. Um so whatever questions do we have? But this is just my opinion, you need to actually formulate your own opinion. Can I delete after posting? Uh, you can delete your own comments, yeah. I believe you can. I The only thing I pretty much delete is whenever someone put something racist on. Uh, because, yeah, they can get stuffed. I didn't even get a chance to purchase a C Mint Mark. Yeah, I didn't purchase any C Mint Marks. They sold out within like six hours, I believe. Six o'clock or seven o'clock. But, you know, I'm just not really going to cry over it. It's just uh, not really worth worrying about. Uh, there is something with the cards. I believe that the card is the same as the C Mint Mark. But... Ah uh, yes, someone said something. Cane phone birth meant for bullion. Yes, you can buy bullion. If you want to buy bullion, I recommend you should actually. Um, you can purchase from the Perth Mint. I have no problem with that. I just don't do it because you have to register, and the government knows how much bullion you actually got. Uh, with eBay, you can actually get coins for bullion price. Just need to look around and shop. Don't just buy the first thing you actually do. Okay, do you... What's Zooey... Zooey Nate? What, you mean Zoom or something? Not too sure. Here, here. Paul, you don't need to actually delete anything. I, I don't see anything any problem with actually anything that you've actually posted uh, no let me see if I can delete these comments oh, I can actually yeah I can actually delete the comments so which comment you want me to delete you can actually delete your own comment as well so you can try that Try it with your last one. Okay, gold prices. Okay, the major thing with gold price is that in if you look up on the internet the hundred years of the gold price, you'll see that with inflation adjusted adjusted the um in 1980 gold price went to like five hundred dollars and with inflation in 2010 it was like two thousand dollars so you pretty much made your money back in uh, 30 years so I'm not too sure if the gold price is actually gonna drop if it is then you have to wait a while you know, 20 30 years for it to actually go back up so that's pretty much why I don't actually buy gold but if you want to buy and sell gold then that, that, I have no problem with that as long as you actually um, do your research when you actually buy and sell gold or silver Kane no, you are wrong. I don't register and no, I'd, I got not mint every week. I'm not too sure what you're actually trying to say there. How long have I been collecting coins? Uh, for probably about 30 years. Probably Australian coins, but also collect uh, Indian coins. I like to collect Kushan. Roman coins are actually good. Ancient Greek coins are actually amazing, actually. Then you've got coins like um, the punch mark coins from India. Silver coins with punches on them. Very, very interesting they are. Chinese cash coins are actually very good as well. I actually quite like Chinese cash coins. 
lots of inscriptions and you're actually collecting a few thousand coins and a lot of them like the knife and spade coins are actually quite expensive so they're actually oh 1978 they're actually quite good okay okay Paul says oh where'd your comment go Okay, so Paul, you deleted your message, but I didn't read it. Tiffany, how do you notice the new $100 banknote? Well, the new 100 I just went to the ATM, or my wife did, to take some money out. And this is what came out of the ATM. So, if you go to the bank, if you're in Coburg, go to the Coburg Commonwealth Bank. They actually have these banknotes. Um, but... I presume that most banks actually won't have these yet. $100 notes are actually not super popular. They generally issue $50 banknotes, so that's what people... And I presume that most ATMs actually don't have $100 banknotes. So, and another thing you need to look out for is the date. So these are 2019, but there's also 2020, so these ones actually might be the lower date. So they might actually be scarcer, but we need time to actually get information on that. Uh, Dwayne's got a bunch of ancients. That's good. You actually like them? I actually like them very much as well. Oh, I just... Simbungy? No, I just go prospecting and dig my own gold. <laughs> actually, some people have actually gone... Metal detecting and found gold coins, you can do that. Uh, I don't actually go gold prospecting, I go fossil hunting instead. I actually like to look for fossils. Uh, paleontology is something that I actually like better than actually coin collecting. That's the only non-Australian coin I have. Which one is... Which one is that? Crema? It's actually quite an... Uh, I can't see uh, what coin you're talking about. No identification. I got so Kanye. I go to the mint every week and buy silver bullion. Ah, uh, grand before they tell government. That's the law in Australia. Okay, so that's what you mean. So you're saying that you actually don't register. And... Uh, Patrick says, what do you think about the 5 and 10 cent coins being phased out? So, I'm not too sure they're actually phasing out the 5 and 10 cent coins. Uh, I reckon that they should actually... So, here's the 5 cent coin. Pretty small, can buy nothing. Uh, has a new kinder on it, I like kinders. So, yeah. So that, that's all right. Um, what do I think? I reckon they should get these. These are worth less than half a cent in 1966. So really, these, these are actually, they can't buy anything. We can see a few countries have actually gotten rid of denominations like these. So like um, Denmark, is the smallest coin is like 10 cent. Same with uh, Sweden and Norway. Actually, their coins, probably, their own crown is probably equivalent to 20 cents. Uh, Finland and the Netherlands have a coin equivalent to 10 cent. And they, these probably are not really worth keeping. The 20 cent coin, while I do like it, it's actually too big. They should probably make it the size of the uh, 5 cent coin to reflect its value. As well as the 20, 50 cent coin, they should actually reduce this. I think the reason why none of these are actually being ordered for the past years is because they're just so big. Uh, I hope these are not going away of the United States and uh, just falling out of use like they did in the 2000s. 
Okay, hundred Sony used by drugs. Well, I've got no problem with someone taking drugs if they want to destroy their lives, as long as they don't destroy other people's. Um, but that said, a lot of other people actually destroy other people's lives without doing drugs. So, uh, Josh Frydenberg is another person who actually does that. He's, I don't think he's a druggie, but he's a, pretty much a prick. Uh, are those notes cryptodes? So you reckon that they've got a tracking in it? I don't think so. It's just really not worth it. Why would they need a note to track you when they can just use your phone? That's... They can record on your phone. The government can record stuff from your phone. They can take images. Uh, they can use the actual phone towers to actually track you. And another thing is that the phone companies are required to keep two years of your data. So really, it's just a waste of the time for them to actually track you with coins or banknotes because there's just too many of them produced when they can just use your phone. It's a lot easier. Uh, the rock channel fossils. I was thinking about it. I was actually going to go up to uh, Heathcote and go because they they have rocks from the Silurian. Is it Silurian? I, I can't remember offhand. I do have geological maps actually give me that information. I think the Silurian uh, to look for trilobites and probably crinoids like blastoids and. Um, there's another one that I actually like, which is called... Oh, they have cystoids. These all, pretty much, they look like, um... A little bit like sea urchins. Not not sea urchins, uh, sea lilies. That's it. Gee. I haven't actually looked at this for a while, so I'm a bit rusty. Uh, what else do they have? Edria asteroids, that's what they have. They're a nice actual creature. Uh, I don't have my phone with me at the moment, so that's where I'm going. Is there anyone else? Uh, heard some news about it. Yeah, I always hear news about them actually getting rid of the uh, five cent coin. Uh, they were talking about that like 15 years ago, so. Yeah, I uh, yeah, copy New Zealand with draw the actual 5 cent coin, reduce the size of the 10, 20, 50 cent coin. See, I don't think that they will actually replace the $5 note with a $5 coin, when the $5 note is actually plastic, so it actually lasts longer than a $5 paper note, and uh, it's just more durable. But a $5 coin probably lasts like 30 or 40 years. People leave the overseas coins at the counter because they do not count. I pick them up. Is that overseas or five? Ah, 2021 baby set. Yeah, I saw that. That actually looks quite nice, Creamer. I actually might pick one up, but I'm actually struggling. Uh, I don't have enough cash, so I might actually leave that. A, the $100 note probably is hold for wealth storage, but also the $50 note as well, because they're just high denominations. People generally hold the 50 because they actually can't get the 100, because I would say sometimes when I go to a bank and ask for $100 notes, uh, they generally don't have them, so they actually just give 50s. And as you can see, these ones I got on Thursday, all from the ATM and or should I say my wife got them and these are all uncirculated so two years later you can still get uncirculated 2018 $50 notes so these 2019 2020 $100 notes I reckon you'd still be able to get them pretty much uncirculated in three years and the old $100 notes I think that they would just have to pull from circulation because these ones pretty much last for 20, 30 years. 
because not that many people actually use them. You don't use them for change because it's the highest denomination. So pretty much you would just use them once and then I'll probably go back to the bank until someone actually takes them out. But these coins you actually can use for change of a hundred dollar bank note. So uh, but most of them will actually go back to the bank as well. Is there any other comments? Mini parking, yes, parking meters don't actually take 50 cent coins. But I went to actually get the train and the train takes uh, 10, 20, 50 cent and one dollar and two dollar coins. So they do take them. The treasurer who can't count, uh, the treasurer is an idiot. Woolworths checkout, Patrick said, don't dispense 50 cent coins. I've actually never noticed that. I might actually try. Finally, someone who gets it. We won't microchip. We're already carrying tracking devices in our pockets 24-7. Yep. And with the way cars are going, I reckon that they'll probably track those soon. Yeah, so your mobile phone... The government can actually already track you by that. They keep your data. They record your data with uh, the phone towers. So pretty much. Well, that's an interesting thought, Wayne. Having precious metal like gold or silver embedded in these banknotes to make them valuable. Um, I reckon that's a good idea. Maybe, so these ones are probably only worth plastic value really. Probably about a few cents in plastic. So to actually make it a hundred dollars, uh, for silver it's actually one gram per one dollar, roughly. So that would be a hundred grams here. So that's actually too heavy to actually be silver coin, silver in it. Maybe gold, gold is about, what, one gram is about, oh, I can't remember. Just say one gram is like $40, roughly. Then you probably have like two or three grams of gold in the coin, uh, not coin, in the banknote. Yeah, it seems like a good idea. But I reckon people probably try and strip the gold out, or strip some of the gold out, and, uh, use that to actually get more profit. That's why they actually have reading on coins. So reading was actually introduced so people wouldn't scrape off the actual coin like that and get scrapes of gold or silver off. So um, then they can actually, from like 10 coins, they can probably get like one or two grams and if they keep doing that, they can actually get extra value from the coins and also reducing the actual value of the actual coin itself. Okay, bring back florin with silver. I personally don't think they're actually going to bring back any gold and silver because uh, the world population is probably too high. I don't think they will have enough gold or silver to actually produce enough coins. Uh, so the, we're just going to be end up with this fiat currency. And people think that there's actually going to be a currency reset, especially in the United States. But there's um, a few things problem with that. Like the QE is actually not going into the economy. So the, all this money printing or whatever is not going into the economy. That money just goes to banks who also give assets to the actual government. So it's not really going into the economy, so people are not getting that money, so prices are not actually being affected. Okay, so nah, so the gold and silver in the banknote will get ruined by the metal. So yeah, if they embed precious metals, the danger is the currency costs more than the value of it. Like. 66.50 cent coin. Yeah, 
that's true. Uh, the value of the actual metal in the actual $100 banknote might go but above $100, so people will get the $100 for $100, and if it goes up to 110 they just won't use it, they'll just keep it and probably sell it for $110. But then you can't get the money because you need $110 and they use all the banknotes have metal in them, so people just hoard it. Yes, the metal will go up easily. It won't go up if it's actually tied to the currency. Like silver and gold used to be tied to the various currencies and then after 1945 it was tied to the American dollar. And then the Americans decided to not be able to, 1971, to um, change the dollar into gold. And that's the current system we have now. Uh, yes, banknotes also be. So the reason why they actually issued banknotes, so in like, here I got a 50 franc from France, quite a nice banknote. It's going to make another video. Was because, you know, having like a hundred of these coins, it's just too heavy to carry. So, figure I'm carrying all these coins. No. Nah. That, that's just too heavy. That's why people don't actually like to use 50 cent coins. You know, having $10 worth is actually quite heavy. And I actually used to get bank notes and coins for my work. And the worst one was getting the 10, 20, and 50 cent coins. Because we actually needed a lot of them. And, uh, you know, you get like 50 to to $100. It's just too heavy. So... America loses plot over everything, yep, yep. Now the reason why I don't think America will actually uh, go for hyperinflation is, as I said, the currency from quantitative easing is actually not going into the economy. It's going into the stock market. That will crash sooner or later. But also, excess currency is actually absorbed by the rest of the world. So it's actually not going into America. A lot of it's been pumped outside of America and they use it as a store of value or for international trading so it's not actually going to affect the American economy and uh, if, if you actually want more information uh, a good channel to actually watch is Walk the World and they also do interviews with other people but they focus on Australia a lot but they do have some good videos on why uh, there's actually going to be no inflation through quantitative easing. And basically now, people are actually focusing on saving and also uh, paying off debt. And that's pretty much deflationary. It takes money out of the economy. So that's another reason why it's not going to actually cause inflation. Uh, so I do like these French banknotes. You can pretty much buy these for like five or ten dollars each. So uh, this is going to be next week's video. So 500 francs was worth about a hundred dollars in 2002. And whoever actually saved this lost uh, pretty much probably ninety dollars. So you can buy this for like five or ten bucks in these conditions so the moral of the story is only collect banknotes are actually uncirculated don't collect any banknotes actually like this unless the serial number is good that's the only exclusion or if it's an error so just a, but just a normal banknote don't collect it if it's not in uncirculated condition because in the long term you're going to lose your money uh, so even with these Sierra Leone banknotes, I only collect them in uncirculated. Uh, so this one is the highest denomination, uh, ten thousand Leones, worth about three or four dollars in the exchange rate. So if you collect it in used condition, in like ten twenty years time, it's still going to be worth like the 
four dollars they actually purchased it for and inflation is just gonna eat your money so even though I do like collecting coins and banknotes you have to pretty much be selective on what you collect but if you like the actual banknote and you don't mind actually paying a bit more money then you know, that's up to you it really has nothing to do with uh, anyone else just like buying a shirt a phone a car most things you purchase are actually going to reduce in value so I had so sim bungee I have received New Zealand coins and rolls from the bank can I return them for Aussie coins what are my rights it happens very often well if you can actually prove they actually got it at the rolls like you have a video then uh, I would say the bank probably will change it but pretty much a not legal tender so in Australia they're pretty much only the scrap metal um, but if it's like a 5, 10, 20 or 50 cent coin or no 20 cent coin it's the same size as Australian coin just use it as Australian coin if you don't want it or you could actually get a group of them and uh, sell them on eBay or Facebook or wherever people actually do buy them like I, I sell groups of like five to ten five coins for like two or three dollars twenty cent coins so you can do that if you get actually foreign coins in your change uh, yes you can stick the actual twenty cent coins or whatever back in the exchange machine be, oh, do I have any here? No, I don't have any here. So, that's what you can actually do. Uh, my bank doesn't have a counting machine. Yeah, what you can do, just, just take a whole group of coins, 20 cent coins, put them in bags and just go in there and just put them in your bank. They, they probably won't even notice. Obviously, they haven't noticed before. So stockpile them and dump a ton of them through the counting machine nearest city. Or if you want to take like twenty or thirty dollars of twenty cents, ten cents, five cents of the bank, put them in, they're not actually gonna check each coin to see if it's Australian. Uh, but New Zealand coins are not legal tender, only Australian coins are. But if you want to pay someone else in another currency, or maybe you wanted to pay them in bananas or something like that, you can actually do that. So you, you don't actually have to pay someone in the Australian dollar. As long as both of you actually agree to accept and receive payment uh, in whatever form you actually need. Any of them rare Yes, yeah, so with the New Zealand coins, look up on Numistar to see if any of them are actually low mintage. Like you got the 5 cent coin from 2005, 2006 and 2004. Uh, they're actually pretty good coins to keep. Also any 2005 10 and 20 cent coins are actually good to keep. Uh, you probably won't get any. Well, you might get a 50 cent coin from New Zealand as a 20 cent coin. It's round and people actually don't really look at their coins, so that's what you should do. You're a comedian, Wayne. So anyway, I've got nothing else to say, really. Glenn takes foreign coins with him when he travels. Okay, you want to see my foreign coins? Okay, so what I've done, what I've been doing over the past year is that uh, I've been scouring eBay for 
coins under face value. So here I have quite a lot of Hong Kong coins. So it's only a few. I think I got like probably at least uh, probably at least a hundred dollars. Hundred and two hundred dollars, so I've got a lot of these Hong Kong coins and I purchased these off eBay for under exchange rate. So for five dollars I'll probably purchase it for like two or three dollars Hong Kong dollars. So I pretty much earned double. That's what you should actually do if you actually travel to another country. Like New Zealand is actually probably the first country we're probably going to go to. So what you do is look up on eBay, get coin lots of New Zealand coins. You can actually purchase quite a lot for under exchange rate. And then you can actually use them over in New Zealand. So most of these coins are actually not really worth keeping. Uh, just really worth spending. And actually, actually put those coins I actually found before aside. And uh, the rest of these I'm just going to probably spend or just put it back in the bank. So, how much Albanian? Oh, Nandi, how you going? How many Banian coins have I got? I've got the 1969 lot. I think I made a video on it before. Uh, and the 1957 zinc lot. And I also have the... 1926 half and one leak. That's about it. I that I should actually make a video on my entire Albanian coin set because I actually like Albania is just an interesting country to me, as well as um, some of the other small countries. Vatican City is actually interesting. Who else? Oh, um, in Europe, probably Liechtenstein, Andorra, Monaco, Luxembourg, and Transnistria is actually also interesting. So, yeah, San Marino. That's another one. They issue very interesting coins. Generally, the large countries like Poland and Germany, they generally are boring coins, not really worth worrying about. Italy is interesting coins. Uh, so, the moral of the stories, you can actually buy coins for under exchange rate on the internet because you can't actually take these to the bank and get exchange rate values so when I go to Hong Kong I will actually use these and pretty much in Hong Kong uh, you you'd most of the time only use the one two and five dollar coin uh, the ten dollar coin do I have any here ten dollar coin I very rarely see these days and I don't see many people using the the 50 cent coin so it's going to be hard to actually spend those. And the, the 20, 10 and 20 cent coins. Have them somewhere. Yeah. The 10 and 20 cent coin I pretty much don't use. I don't really use that much in Hong Kong. Home Hoa. So, yep. So a lot of coins going to use those in Hong Kong so that's one strategy you can do to actually get some extra money and also you need to actually check these for errors you can get errors in high grade coins so how often do you go to Hong Kong uh, try and go once a year so every year you go to Hong Kong so these will probably be used up in the next one and you could probably also do it for banknotes. So banknotes are probably uh, less likely to get for exchange rate, but you can actually find them. So, or you can actually find older banknotes for pretty much close to exchange rate. So you can get quite a few 
Hong Kong dollars from the 80s, like $100 banknotes for pretty much nearly close to 100 Hong Kong dollars. But, then here is the actual Mikey card. So this is, this is actually taken off the Hong Kong Octopus card actually. So Octopus, they use a, in Hong Kong they use an Octopus card. And you pretty much, you don't use, you can get these if you use coins, but most people actually don't do that. They just use these online. You can also use the Octopus card for online payments. Do I have an Octopus card here? Uh, yeah. So here's the Octopus card. And it has uh, information about what you should, what you can use it for. And it doesn't have any personal information on the actual card that's actually inside. And as you can see, they're the same size. This one you can use it on train, bus, and uh, tram. So you can use it anywhere. And you can also use this one to pay for food. You can pay for a lot of other things with the Octopus card. With the Mikey card, you can't actually do that. So, anyway, I'll leave this actual uh, live stream. It wasn't supposed to be a live stream. It's just supposed to be a quick video on looking at these coins. Uh, you know, people ask questions and they get a bit distracted. Anyway, I'd right, say so thank you very much for watching my video. And uh, have an awesome coin and banknote collecting time. If you have any questions, just leave them down below. I'll try and answer them. Well, maybe I should actually do a video uh, answering questions. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So, have a good coin collecting time. And just remember, if you miss out on a coin or a banknote, don't get upset. There's a lot more out there. Thank you and goodbye.